Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we are doing my face powder declutter. Um, I have a, I have a lot of face powder. I didn't realize how much I had actually. So um, add these here. These were my everyday makeup drawer. So this is what we are going to be going through today. Real quick before we jump in, if you guys have missed it, I am going through my whole collection doing a declutter right now. This is one of the last categories. I think I just have two more categories after this to do. Um, so I will put the playlist above for you in case you missed any. And I will let you guys know as well a disclaimer about what I'm doing with the makeup. So as far as the things that I am decluttering, those most of those items are going to friends and family. Of course, anything I got for free and gratis when I worked at Sephora or NPR always gets passed along to friends and family. Anything that I purchased with my own money if it's in good condition I do sometimes sell it on my blog sale which I always have in the description uh, box down below if you want to check that out um, or uh, sometimes it gets just passed along to friends and family as well so that's what I do with the makeup anything expired goes in the trash but let's go ahead and jump in because obviously I have a lot here so I want to start with these, this here this is in a project right now so I'm definitely keeping it it's from Maybelline, it's the Fit Me Powder. As you can see, I'll give you a sneak peek. It's almost gone, so I am trying to use this up for my Finish 13 by Halloween project, so I'm gonna keep that and continue to work on getting that out of my collection. All right, next up I have this Smashbox powder. This is the Photo Filter uh, powder. I actually really like this. I did have the Halo powder from Smashbox, and I'm not a fan of that one. That's the one with the sifter that you turn. But this one is really nice. I actually do enjoy it. I use it as a setting powder more than a foundation powder, but I do enjoy it, so I will be keeping that one. All right, next up I have this Becca powder. This is called the Hydra Mist Set and Refresh Powder. I was not a fan of this. Um, if you missed it, I did do a full review on this and I actually compared it to three other high-end powders which I will be showing you guys in a second. And uh, this was one of my least favorite. I think, was it my very least? No, it was not my very least. I think I decluttered my very least favorite already. Yes, I did, um, the Urban Decay one. But this one was my third favorite of the four. So it was not very high up there. I just, it's it's weird. I like the feeling of it because it definitely does feel like that cooling, soothing, almost wet kind of feeling when you apply it. But it actually makes my makeup look cakey. And I know that sounds counterintuitive. You would think if it's cooling and lightweight and refreshing that it should be light um, and not cake up, but it doesn't. It shows every single fine line and wrinkle underneath my eye. And um, I can use it as a face setting powder, but I can't use it under my eye, which is usually what I like loose powders for. So for that reason, I just don't reach for it and I'm gonna go ahead and declutter that. All right, next up, uh, let's go ahead and do the other two that were in that um, review video. So this Hourglass Veil Powder, this is a loose powder. This was my absolute favorite of the four. This is fantastic, I absolutely adore it. It works great underneath the eye or for the whole face. It's a beautiful, beautiful powder. I'm definitely keeping that one. And then the other one was this Marc Jacobs one. This was really close to being a favorite as well. Like the two, these two together were almost tied. Like I just really, really love both of them. Um, but this Marc, Marc Jacobs powder is definitely not going anywhere. It's the finish line powder. It's fantastic. I love, love the way it looks. I love the packaging. It's like the perfect sifter, the best sifter I've ever found on a loose powder. I love it. So definitely keeping this, it's fantastic. All right, another love that I'm definitely not going to be able to get rid of. You guys hear me talk about this a lot. I actually have two of them. One of them usually lives in my purse, but I pulled it out for this video. Um, these are my MAC uh, Mineralized Skin Finish in Light Plus. I've gone through so many of these, I can't count. It is my Holy Grail powder for a pressed powder, and for that reason, I love carrying it in my purse because it's not messy. It's great for touch-ups. Definitely keeping both of those. I love that powder. All right, here's another powder that I actually never really got on board with, and this again is from Becca. This is the uh, Becca Soft Light Blurring Powder. This was just too dark for my skin tone. When it first came out, they said it was like um, supposed to be for all skin tones, but it was too dark for light and fair skin tones. Like it looks like it'd be okay, but when you apply it on your face, you can definitely see that it looks darker and then it gets kind of patchy and it's not, it's just not right for my skin tone. So I'm going to go ahead and let go of that now. 
All right, next up I have my Laura Mercier powders. This is the translucent powder from Laura Mercier. I have the full size and then I also have the travel size. I really like having um, a travel size because I do bring this with me when I travel. Um, and then the full size I usually just use at home. So it, it is one of my favorite powders. I do actually like the uh, Hourglass Veil powder and the Marc Jacobs one better than this now, but this used to be my absolute favorite. Uh, but I still like it enough to go ahead and use up what I have left. I might not repurchase it because I might go for one of those other two. Um, but I do love the, the convenience of the travel size though. So I might still buy that size if I run out. So anyway, I am keeping that, those though because I do really enjoy them. All right, next I have this Laura Geller powder. This is the Baked and Balanced Brighten uh, Foundation Powder. I've heard so many good things about this powder. I was really excited to try it, and one of my subscribers actually sent it to me, which was so sweet of her, but it did arrive broken. And I tried repressing it, but it just doesn't work the same, and baked powders are really tricky for repressing because they just kind of lose their... The, what what makes them special is when they're baked, um, the texture is just different. So uh, I, I don't think that this gave me a good idea of what the actual foundation is like because I never got to actually try it uh, without the repressing. So unfortunately, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this one. I just don't think it's good, but I would still like to try that powder eventually. All right, next I have this Maybelline Master Fix uh, Translucent Setting Powder. I thought this was okay. I wanted to try to find like a good drugstore um, loose setting powder. I don't think this one is that great. I think it's okay. Um, you can definitely get by with it, but it's not my favorite. So I'm going to go ahead and let go of that one now. All right, next I have this Kat Von D, uh, what is this called? Brightening powder in petal. I actually haven't tried this yet. I just remember I picked it up right before I did my uh, makeup or my I picked it up right before I did my face powder collection and so I put it in here instead of keeping it in my new drawer and I forgot to pull it in. So I still haven't tried this yet. So I'm going to put this back in my new drawer so I can remember to, or you know what, even better. I'm going to put this in my everyday makeup drawer so I get a chance to try it, but um, I'm not going to declutter it yet because I haven't even tried it. Okay, next I have this one from Graftobi and this is one I received in PR and I just never ever reach for it. I have way too many loose setting powders and this not being my favorite one, I just never grab it. So I will go ahead and let go of that now. All right, next up I have Cover FX um, Illuminating Setting Powders. And again, I have two, two of these. I have the full size and the uh, baby size. I feel like this is almost identical to the Laura Mercier powder and I really love that one as well. Again, I love having a travel size and a full size for at home use and on the go use. Do I really need it? Probably not, but I'd like to, because I love it so much, I'd like to use it up and I just won't repurchase it, so I will keep both of those. Next up, I have this Kat Von D Locket uh, Setting Powder in Translucent. I just don't like this. I've been really trying to like it. I did get it in gratis. I've been trying to make myself like it, and I just, I can't get on board with it. It just has this I don't know what it is about this powder. I just don't like the way that it sets my face, so I'm going to go ahead and let go of that now. All right, and then I have two different yellow powders. I have this one from Sephora Collection. It's the Bright Set Powder, and then I have the Kiss Pro Touch Banana Powder. So I don't feel like I need two different um, yellow setting powders. This one I got in PR, actually, the Kiss one. Which one do I like better? I think I'll keep the Kiss one and let go of the Sephora one. They're both nice. I just don't need to, so I'm just going to do it that way. Moving on, I have um, this uh, powder here from Hourglass. This is in the shade Luminous Light. Um, I really like this as a kind of like a very glowy setting powder or as a highlighter. I kind of use it both ways, so I keep it in my setting powder drawer, um, but I could really use it either way, and I have used quite a bit of it. Um, I do want to keep it. I think it's a nice powder. Next, I have this Antonym powder, and this is in the uh, shade Light. It's the bake, Baked Powder Foundation. Um, I think this is a really nice powder. I actually really like the feel of it. It has a really nice, lightweight, uh, finely milled kind of feeling. Uh, the light shade is a little dark on me. I feel like I should have gone with the fair because the way that it swirled, um, it gave me a lot more of the dark swirl than the light swirl. I don't know if they're always that way. It's one of those things where I think it depends on, you know, how the product, uh, comes together, but it's a little dark on me. So I can pretty much only use this when I've got a little bit of a base tan. Um, but I still like it. So I think I will go ahead and hang on to that. 
All right, next up I have this Marc Jacobs powder. This is in the shade Ivory Bisque. I actually found this one at uh, TJ Maxx, got a great deal on it. I think it's a really nice powder for setting. It's kind of a basic powder. I'm glad I didn't pay full price for it, I'll say that, but I do like it enough to keep it and continue to use it. And then next up I have this by Terry Powder. This is one I mentioned in a favorites recently. This is called the Compact Expert Dual Powder. I really enjoy this powder. You have the matte powder on the outer rim and then inside this one has a little bit of shimmer. So what I do is swirl my brush together to get just the perfect amount of shimmer and it's a beautiful powder. I really enjoy it. It does remind me a little bit of like the hourglass powders. It's very, very nice. Um, I do want to continue to use that so I will be keeping that one. All right, next I have this Becca powder, and this is the Perfect Skin Mineral Powder. This one I actually got on Holt Look. I love getting good deals on makeup, so um, this one here is a really nice powder as well. Yeah, I really do enjoy this one as well, and I will be keeping that one. All right, next I have this CoverGirl powder. This is called the Vitalist Healthy Powder. This powder I don't feel like I've tried enough. Um, I got it in PR and only got a few uses with it, so I'd like to keep that and try it a bit more. All right, next I have this Cover Effects powder. This I don't like. Um, this was actually my daughter's, and she decided she didn't want it, so I grabbed it thinking maybe I could use it, but it's not the right shade for me. She has more of a uh, yellow undertone than I do, so I am going to go ahead and let go of that. Next I have the Rimmel Stay Matte. This is one of my favorite drugstore powders. I'm honestly really surprised I haven't hit pan on this yet because I've had it a while and I've used it a lot, but I do like it and I'm gonna keep that one. Oh, next I have this Tarte BB uh, powder. This actually came, or I actually purchased this during the Ulta 21 day sale. Uh, this I really enjoy as well. I've been enjoying that, so I will keep that. All right, next I have this Revlon Photo Ready. This I've had for a while. Um, I don't like this. It has this like weird glitter in there and it just doesn't look right on my skin. So I'm going to go ahead and let go of that. All right. Next I have this Bare Minerals uh, little powder duo. This came in a boxy charm. One side's matte and one side has a shimmer. So it's kind of like a highlighter on one side, but I think it's a nice powder. I do use it from time to time and I will be keeping that. All right, last but not least, I have my Algenis Color Correcting Powder. This I've talked about so many times on my channel. You guys are probably tired of hearing about it, but this is such a great powder. I don't feel like it gets enough hype. They used to sell it at Sephora, but I, you can only find it on the Algenis website now. I will try to link everything down below for you guys' convenience. I think it's a nice powder. Um, it just gives you like the perfect amount of pigmentation. It doesn't look powdery. It's just really nice, so I will be keeping that as well. All right, that is the end. Let's see what I was able to declutter. All right, so I decluttered nine powders. Doesn't sound like a lot, but I'm actually really excited. I think that's a good chunk of what I had in here. And uh, now that I have less, I should be able to get through some of the powders that I am keeping. I'm very excited with that progress. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video today. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I think we are going to be doing probably single eyeshadows next time, so look forward to that. If you're not already subscribed, make sure to click that subscribe button while you're here so you don't miss out on future content, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.